All right, so for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Sierra St. Arnold. I am a gold consultant and today we're going to be kind of going over daily routines and time management and all that stuff. And I did not record this, but I just played a video from Eric Thomas talking about how everybody has 24 hours in the day and your success is basically dependent upon how you spend those 24 hours. So as I was saying right before I started the recording, everybody gets the same 24 hours. There's no somebody gets 24 and a half, somebody gets 23. It's 24 hours across the board for everybody. And what you do in those 24 hours, 100% does determine how successful you will be and things like that. So I know that everybody's situation is different. Some people are doing this part-time. Some people are doing this full-time. Personally, I do this full-time when I started. I was doing it part-time, but I still had to figure out how to work it into my schedule so that I could be successful and make this my full-time job, which I now have done. So I'm going to kind of go over what I did, one, when I started and I was doing this part-time because I know that for a lot of people, when you have a job, you have to go to from eight to five or nine to five or whatever. You're like, I don't have enough time in the day. And the fact of the matter is you just kind of have to find time and it can be hard sometimes, but I'm going to give you guys some tips on how to make the most of the time you do have. Um, and then I'm going to kind of go over my daily schedule and all that stuff. Like I said, this is not going to be the same for everybody because I do this full time. It's just me and my husband. I don't have kids to take care of or anything like that. So I do have a lot more time than some people, but hopefully this stuff will help you guys. So the first thing that I want to tell you guys is basically what I started doing, even when I was doing this part-time, is I would start every single month and I would set monthly goals. So for me right now, my monthly goals have been um, here recently, at least, um, that I want to book at least three trips per month. Obviously, I can do more than that, and I know I will do more than that, but three is kind of my baseline. I also kind of set a goal for myself that I would post two separate mock bookings every single week and I would send to groups and all that kind of stuff. Um, I also have certain goals that I want to hit for team building because I do both sides of the business. So I have a number every month of how many agents I want to sign up. Currently, my number for this month is 30. Um, and I haven't, I'm not 100% sure what I'm at, but I know that I have already beat my goal of booking three trips this month. And I have been very consistent at posting mock bookings twice a week. So basically, like I said, I set my monthly goals at the beginning of the month or like right before the month starts. And if they're the same goals every single month, that's fine. Because for me, the past two or three months, mine have been pretty much the same. Um, and one that, and also that kind of helps make your schedule easier because you know what you're working towards. So I start with my monthly goals and then I kind of break down each individual goal that I have and formulate a plan of how I'm going to achieve that goal. Because not only does it one, help me achieve my goals and be, you know, further myself in my business, but two, it helps me create a schedule because I know what I need to get done in order to complete those things or reach those goals or whatever the case may be. So for example, um, basically what I do for um, my amount of bookings that I get per month, I say, you know, I need to share a mock booking X amount of times this month or X amount of times per week, whichever it is. Um, I also look up travel agent recommendations on Facebook that other people are looking for um, at least once a week, sometimes more, but usually about once a week. Um, I say that I want to give my business card to a certain number of people this month. It was eight. And I think I'm at like, I've given it out to like five. So I need to step up that game a little bit. <laughs> um, and then also have goals, uh, like I break down my goals into how many times I'm going to post on social media, just so that I have content to, for people to see, you know, I am a real person to give people information about destinations or travel rules, or whatever the case may be. Um, I make sure that I have all of that broken down and then I can make a schedule from that. So um, pretty much what I would suggest to do, whether you do this full time or part time, is determine how many hours of each day you are available, whether it's 15 minutes a day or it's six hours a day, whatever that number is, figure out how available you are each day. And you don't have to do this at the beginning of the month. You can literally do this the day before. And I'm going to kind of get into that here in a second. But I pretty much figured out, you know, once I started doing this full time, how much time am I willing to dedicate to this every day? And how much time am I willing to sacrifice from doing other things, especially if you have another job or you have kids or whatever the case may be. Like I said, I don't have a whole lot of responsibilities outside of this. So I understand that it is a little bit easier for me, but it's one of those things, like I said, even when I was working full time, I still had to figure out what parts of the day I was going to be able to dedicate to my business so that I could make this my full time job. So 
what I do is I make my to-do list late. Well, I won't say late, but the night before the next day. So right before I go to bed, I kind of sit down by myself. Everything's kind of quiet and we're calmed down and all that kind of stuff. And I think about what I need to do for the next day. And I will tell you guys, Google Calendar is my lifesaver. Everything that I do ever is put into my Google Calendar. So I can show you guys that here in a minute. Um, but basically what I'll do is I'll pull up my Google Calendar for the next day, see all the things that I need to do that are already pre-scheduled, whether it's one-on-ones with my agents, um, calls with my clients, trainings I want to do, whatever it is, I make sure that I look at that the night before. And so that way I make sure I account for the time I need to spend on those things. And pretty much what I do for my to-do list, which I will share with you guys a picture here in just a second. Um, I pretty much write everything down in the order that I'm going to do it for that day. And I always try to start with the easier stuff because I am not a morning person. I get up every day at about eight o'clock. I don't usually start working until about 9, 9.30-ish. And even then, I'm still kind of dragging, kind of asleep. So I want to make sure that the stuff I have to do first thing in the morning is not going to require a whole lot of my attention because I'm still half asleep. And then as the day goes on and I have more energy, I can, you know, do, I can put the things on my to-do list that are going to take more time, take more effort, all of that stuff. So that's those things you kind of have to make it work for you. So if you are a morning person and you like to get up early and you have a lot of energy in the morning, maybe do the stuff that needs a lot of attention and effort and all that first thing. And then later in the day when you're tired and not really feeling like it, then that's when you can put all the easier stuff. So let me share a picture of my, um, one of my to-do lists with you guys. Let's see. Can you guys see this? Yes, no? Anybody? If y'all would just put in the chat that you can see this, that would be great. Yes, okay, perfect. So let me zoom in a little bit. So I do mine by the day. Um, it usually takes me about, you know, half of a sheet of paper. So this was just one from a couple of weeks ago. So basically what I do is I start my day with team building stuff um, because it's easier in my opinion. I just have to respond to people on LinkedIn, close and repost my job. Doesn't really take a lot of effort. That's what I do first thing in the morning because that's when I have the least amount of energy and I want to do the least amount of stuff. So I do that. Um, and then I always put my mock bookings, sharing those five times in the morning, in the afternoon, and at night. So as you can see, I have a little line in between every little section. So this is kind of like all the stuff I'm going to do in like the first hour or two. And then this is what I'm going to do in the second or third hour. And then this is what I'm going to do, you know, at the end of my work day. And I'll be very honest with you guys. I pretty much work maybe four or five hours every day. Um, and that's kind of my schedule. I get everything done that I need to do. And the reason I'm able to do that is because I have a schedule and a routine that I have done for so long. I just kind of, it's just kind of second nature to me at this point. So I don't need to work longer than that because I get all of my stuff done. And that's not to say that there's not days where I work a lot longer than that. If I have certain things going on or if I have clients traveling and stuff like that, but for the most part, I don't work. Maybe I don't work more than maybe four or five hours, Monday through Friday and a little bit on Saturday is completely I spend that time by myself or with my family or work so um doing that routine over and over and over again kind of is what got me to be able to be at this point so like I said I start with all the super easy stuff posting and responding on TikTok that's super easy I already have all of those videos made and I talk about that in my TikTok training if you guys are interested in any of that so basically all I have to do is go in there, click on it and post it. I don't have to film anything. I don't have to think of a caption. I don't have to do any of that. It's already done for me. I just have to post it. Super, super easy. And then joining groups, that usually doesn't take me very long either. And I don't do that every day now just because I am in so many groups. But for those of you who are new and still doing that, that's definitely one of those, what I would consider easier tasks in my opinion. And then I kind of move into meetings with people, um, responding to text messages, emails, calls, whatever the case may be, anybody that called me the night before. Um, personally, I do have business hours. So my business hours are nine to five Monday through Friday, nine to one on Saturday and closed on Sunday. And although I don't necessarily work during those specific hours, because like I said, I only work four or five hours a day, I don't respond to clients after five o'clock. That's just a, a way that I have a good work-life balance. That's the way I'm able to not be burnt out and 
things like that. So um, that's kind of what I do. If people call me or text me or anything after five, if they're not currently on a trip, then they can wait till the next day. Um, just because I am a small business does not mean that I'm available 24 seven. I do have a life outside of this. So that is the reason that I do that. Um, so this is kind of when I respond to all of those, when I'm a little bit more awake and can have a full on conversation and not still sound like I'm half asleep. Um, any meetings I have with agents or one-on-ones, I try to schedule those or have those scheduled within the middle of the day. So that again, I have more energy. I have, you know, I'm able to help a little bit better than if I'm still half asleep and things like that. So as you can see here, I had a meeting with an agent and then I did a webinar. And so anytime that I have things that are at a specific time, I always make sure I write those down. And these are also listed in my calendar. So that way, like I said, when I'm looking at it, then before I can remember, hey, I have these meetings tomorrow at this time. I need to make sure I work around those things. Um, and then these follow-ups are with clients that I sent quotes to. So I basically just followed up with them, asked them if they had any questions, if they were ready to book, all of that kind of stuff, okay? So that's kind of what I do in the middle of the day. Um, and again, that usually doesn't take me very long. If I have meetings, obviously it takes a little bit longer um, just because those are usually 30 minutes to an hour. But I already know beforehand how long those meetings are supposed to be because that's what time they scheduled for. Uh, and then I kind of keep going with the calls to clients. And then I do my mock bookings again this day. It looks like I didn't do it in the afternoon, but typically I do. And then I also go back to LinkedIn and respond to any people that have inquired about my job posting or anything like that. So that's kind of like my very basic day-to-day -day routine. Obviously this can change a lot. Um, and sometimes like over here, you can see I had a lot of like small things like respond to Caitlin, which is a wedding planner I'm working with. Um, somebody's payment I needed to process like little things that don't take very long and I can just kind of squeeze those in in between I kind of set off to the side if I don't have a specific time that they need to be done so that is kind of what my schedule looks like um, every day obviously that's going to be different and I'm going to that thing that I recommend to you guys is at the beginning of every month go on to the training calendar it is listed on the infinity way website and it is also in the discord chat so the um discord chat has our team horizon trainings on it that are just for team horizon and then the infinity calendar is for all of infinity and rising tide and all of that stuff so i go on there at the beginning of the month and i look through the entire calendar and i look at which trainings are interesting to me which ones i want to be on things like that and i schedule them in my calendar at the beginning of the month so even if it's not happening until the very last day of september i'm still putting it in there on september 1st so that i don't forget and obviously life happens, things comes up and I'm not always able to on the ones I want to, but I make sure to make myself a note to go back and watch the recording. So that's kind of how I figure out what trainings I'm going to go to. If I'm personally doing any trainings like this one, I make sure that's on my calendar. Um, anytime I have a call with a client, whether it's going to be a 10 minute call or a two hour call, I put it in my calendar. Um, all of my one-on-ones with my agent are put into my Google calendar. Um, I also put any client payment dates. So when someone books a trip with me, as soon as they do that, I go into my calendar and I can show you guys kind of how I do that. I color code everything. That is like the only way I can stay organized and know what certain things are. So right here, you can see that um, I had somebody staying at a hotel last weekend. I currently have someone staying at a hotel in Asheville. So I have every Every single day that they're on there I don't have their flight times or anything like that but I do keep it on here in green so that I know that my clients are traveling at that point and then I can check in with them like I texted this girl today because I know they got in late last night so I texted her this morning and I said you know hey just want to make sure everybody or you guys got there safely if you need anything please let me know and then the day after they come back I'll, I'll text them again and make sure they got home safely and all that kind of stuff it's just creating a relationship with your clients so I have all of that in my google calendar um, right here this person's cruise is due in two weeks so I set a reminder so that I can let him know hey your final payment is due in two weeks just to let you know just to remind you um, especially for people that book really far in advance I make sure I do that um, anytime I have a Disney booking, they can do dining reservations 60 days before they arrive. So I put that on my calendar. Um, anytime I need to make a payment for somebody, this was for my cousin. So I put that I needed to make her payment and it's in red, orange, whatever color you want to call it. So that I know that it's important and it needs to get done that day. Like it's very, very important. I also do it for any final payments. Um, like I said, that are due in two weeks. Um, anytime I have people traveling and then 
so this trip right here this guy went to Cancun it was a couple and they were on a honeymoon so I wanted to send them an amenity so two weeks before they leave I set a reminder to email whatever hotel they're staying at wherever they're staying I set a reminder to email them for um, the extra amenity that I want sent to their room and all that kind of stuff so every little thing when I tell you guys it's in my calendar I absolutely mean every little thing so that way I don't, I, there's no way I can forget because I get the notifications on my phone 30 minutes before every single thing. And I go in and look at my calendar every single day. So um, that's kind of how I do that. Um, let's see, somebody had a question, I think. Um, do I prefer using Google Calendar rather than a physical calendar? So personally, I do like physical calendars, but we live in a very small area, so I don't really have anywhere to put it. Um, and I like Google Calendar because it gives me the reminders. So when I have a piece of paper, I have to actually go back and look at it on Google Calendar. I can set it to like tell me um, that I have something coming up or whatever. So I like that because sometimes I get busy doing whatever I'm doing and I forget that it's about to happen. So it's nice to have that little reminder, um, but it's totally personal preference. Um, anyways, so the next thing I was going to say, um, I personally pick one day a week to work on content. So for Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever it is, and I spend about an hour total every week doing that. So if you guys look at my TikTok, you'll notice that in a lot of videos, I'm wearing the exact same outfit. It's because I record like 10 videos at a time and then I don't have to worry about it for another week. So it's one of those things, if you can find, like if you do work a Monday to Friday job, if you have like an hour on Sunday to work on it, then you can do that. Schedule all your posts on Facebook and Instagram and then you don't have to think about it until the, very, until the next week comes. So it's one of those things you just, it takes a little bit of work up front, but then you're set for the week. So that's, a, that's one way that I save a lot of time. I don't go in and post on Facebook myself every day. I spend, you know, maybe an hour, 30 minutes max, especially when I'm just doing like Facebook posts. Um, I'll spend about 30 minutes to an hour scheduling those in Meta Business Suite or Planable, whichever you use. I go in and schedule those, you know, one day and then I'm set for like a week or so. So that's one way that I save time on doing that. And I still get all the information out there that I need to share with people. Um. I already mentioned um, if I don't, if I'm not able to go to trainings that I make a note to watch the recording. Um, and then, like I said, I add that I need to share my mock booking five times in every little section. So basically, like I was saying, I section my to-do list out for morning, afternoon, and like late afternoon. Um, and I make sure that I have sharing my mock bookings in every little section, because that's pretty much how I go down my to-do list is from top to bottom. I don't skip around because I used to do that and I would get really sidetracked and I wasn't actually being very productive. So that is part of the reason that I stopped doing it that way, because I cannot say when I was like that. Um, uh, so I kind of went over my typical schedule. I will also say I start every morning with like a motivational video. So like the one that I started this video with, with Eric Thomas, I watch a lot of his stuff. Usually they're no longer than maybe 10 minutes. I start my day that way. So I'm kind of like pumped up and ready to go and motivated and not just like dragging out of bed. Like, oh my God, I have to work again today. I kind of start my day with that and then go into my actual daily tasks of working. Um, another thing that I used to do not so much anymore, like I said, because I have gotten such a routine down, I used to put even stuff that wasn't business related. So I have two dogs. So like letting my dogs out to go to the bathroom or feeding my dogs or feeding myself lunch or making dinner or whatever. I always put, I used to always put that stuff on my to-do list as well, because then it's kind of like, okay, this is, it's coming close to dinner time and I need to, I need to stop what I'm doing to be able to work on that or whatever. And it also kind of helps you prevent from, you know, getting started on something and then you don't know how to spend three hours there because it's not gone. Because that used to be me, I would kind of get down in a little rabbit hole and then I wasn't actually getting as much stuff done as I needed to. Um, so some of my tips for sticking to a schedule, um, when I first started, like I said, once you do it so much, you'll kind of get in that routine of like, okay, this is about how long this will take me. This is how much time I need to set aside for this, all that kind of stuff. So when I first started, I would set timers for 30 minutes, an hour, whatever that is. And once that timer would go off, I would stop whatever I was doing and move on to the next thing. And that also kind of helped me get in the groove of being more efficient with my time and not just like sitting there and scrolling around on Facebook and doing whatever. I'm like, okay, this is how much time I have to get this done. I need to get it done in this amount of time. 
And then anything that I didn't finish before the timer went off, I would go back to at the end of the day. So I don't think I mentioned that yet, but basically at the end of my day, once I've gotten pretty much all of my to-do list stuff done, at the end of the day, I'll go back. And if I have anybody I need to respond to or anything, any paperwork I need to send to anybody or something like that, then I'll do all of that at the end of the day to kind of wrap up my day and close all the loose ends and all that kind of stuff. So anything you don't get done in the time that you set for yourself, just move it to the end of the day or the next day or whatever your time allows for. Um, another thing is I get super distracted by my phone. So if I would get a text message from somebody or somebody would call me, whether it was work related or not, I would stop everything I was doing to go check that. And then I would get down a rabbit hole on Facebook and stuff like that. So I set the timer on my phone and then I set it on the other side of the room so I can focus on what I'm doing. Um, I don't really need my phone for anything because I use Google Voice for clients, which I can pull up on my computer. So really the only thing that I'm getting on my phone that is going to distract me is stuff that is not work related. So I always set it somewhere else. Um, and then as far as my computer goes, I don't ever have a ton of tabs open. I only have tabs open for what I am working on. So if I'm working on a quote, I'll have, open, you know, Travel Joy because that's what I use for my itineraries. I'll have open Vax and then I'll have open maybe like Google Flights or if they've sent me, you know, their IDs and stuff and I'm entering that, I'll have those pulled up. But I don't have anything else pulled up other than what I'm working on because I used to have like 7,000 tabs open every day and I would have LinkedIn pulled up and every time somebody would send me a message, it would ding and then I would go to do that. And then it was just like a lot of back and forth. And the whole point is to be more efficient in what you're doing so it doesn't take as much time. So um, I only have tabs open for what I'm working on at that very moment. Um, I already talked about sectioning out your to-do list to break up the time period. So like I said, morning, afternoon, late afternoon, whatever it is, even if you only have, you know, 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes when you come home from work and 15 minutes right before you go to bed, I would still make a to-do list for what you need to get done in those 15 minutes, whether it's responding to somebody or looking up a price for something or whatever it is, I would still section it out so that you know, like, hey, this is what I need to get done first. And then tonight I can work on this when I have, you know, maybe a little bit more time. The other piece of advice that I will give you guys, and this kind of goes back to me only keeping tabs open on my computer for what I'm working on in that moment and leaving my phone somewhere else, is I used to feel like I had to respond to clients right away. Like as soon as they would email me or text me, I felt like I had to respond right then and there. And I would tell you guys, if you are new, um, if you haven't been here long or you haven't had a first client or whatever, please do not put yourself in that position where you are responding to people as soon as they text you. And I know that obviously you don't, I'm not saying to wait, you know, three or four days to respond or even a day to respond. But if you're in the middle of something, finish what you're doing and then respond to them. Because if you are responding to everyone like, five seconds after they send you a message from the jump, then later on down the road when they have other things and it's nine o'clock at night and you're trying to hang out with your kids or put your kids to bed or whatever, and they text you, they're going to expect to respond just as quickly as you did every other time. So don't set unrealistic expectations for your clients for your availability. Like I said, I have a life outside of this. I love my job. I love this business, but I do have a life that is not work-related that I also want to enjoy. So don't feel like you are required to respond as soon as you get somebody's information. So if I get an inquiry form from somebody at like 7.30 at night, I don't even look at it. I wait until the next day to kind of go over it and reach out to those people. I don't, as soon as I get it, I don't say, hey, I got your inquiry form and it's been two seconds since you hit the submit button. Like, I don't do that because then people expect you to be at their beck and call every single time they reach out to you. And that's just not realistic for you or for them. Um, because like I said, life happens. You may be in the middle of something really serious that you don't have your phone and, and you're not responding to people. And people are like, well, what happened to her? Where's she at? She always responds to me so fast. So just keep that in mind, especially for people that are new and don't have a whole lot of experience with talking to clients and stuff yet. Please don't set yourself up for, I don't want to say for failure, but to be burnout, because that's kind of what I did for myself at first. I felt like I had to respond to everybody. And I was just like, oh my God, I'm always talking to somebody. So now I have, that's why I have my set business hours. And if people look up my website or me on Google or Facebook or whatever, they can see those hours. So when they text me or call me after five o'clock, I am not required to respond to them until the next day. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, another thing that I will say for people who are on a limited schedule, whether it's the fact that you work at, at an office job full time Monday to Friday, eight to five, or you have kids and you have they are at home, they don't go to school, whatever the case is. Um, I will say 
figure out what is most important each day and work on that. So like that, I would still do your to-do list the night before, but think about, you know, what do I have to do, you know, this week or this month or whatever that absolutely needs to get done before anything else. So for those of you who just recently signed up, it may be, you know, the steps on the infinity site. Or for those of you that have been here for a while, it may be, you know, getting a certain client a quote back to them or responding to inquiry forms or posting on Facebook. If you don't really have a lot of client stuff going on right now, whatever it is, figure out what is most important to you and your business for that next day and work on that. So again, whether you have six hours to work on it or 20 minutes, figure out what's most important and start with that. Um, as, our, as I already said, I always set reminders on my phone to either do certain things or attend certain things, whether it's making the Disney dining reservations or going to a training or calling a client or whatever it is. I always set reminders so that I don't forget because the last thing you want to do is schedule a meeting with a client and then not call them because that looks so bad on your part. And if you do get in a situation where you're supposed to call a client and something happens, regardless of what it is, please don't just not call them, like reach out to the client and let them know like, hey, I'm so sorry, this X, Y, and Z came up. Can we please reschedule our call? Otherwise, if you don't say that and you just don't call them, they're 1000% going to go find somebody else to work with, or they're going to book it on their own. And then you just lost a client. So that's why I set reminders because a lot of times, especially now where we live, we used to not have phone service where we were at. So I would have to go into town every day to make calls. And I'm like, I need to schedule these all at the same time. And I set reminders so that I would know like, hey, I need to leave to go to town so I can make this phone call. Um, and then, like I said, 20 minutes of work is better than nothing. So when I was working full time, I would do a tiny, tiny bit, like maybe 15 minutes before I would go to work. I woke up 15 minutes earlier. So it's one of those things people say, I don't have the time to do this. You have 24 hours, just like everybody else does. You just have to set aside the time to do it. So it's all in your mindset. So if you tell yourself, I don't have enough time to do this, I can't do that because I have to do, I have to go to work and then I have to go to ball practice and whatever, then you're not going to get it done because you've already set that standard for yourself in your mind. So you kind of have to tell yourself like, hey, this is what I have to work with. This is what I need to get done. Like, let's get it done and sit there and focus on the one thing or, you know, the however many things it is and get it done right then and there so that you don't have to, because then tomorrow when it's not done, it's still not done. And you're thinking about, oh my gosh, I haven't got this done yet. I still need to do it. And then you get discouraged and then you don't want to do this anymore. And it's a whole like domino effect. So just know, obviously we have 24 hours in a day. If you know, if you know, you work from eight to five, you have to leave the house at seven 30 and you don't get home till five 30 then that right there, if you're not able to do absolutely anything while you're at work because you can't have your phone or whatever, you know that when you get home, these are the things I need to get done in the first, you know, 15 minutes that I'm home. And it might suck for a little while because you're dog tired and you just want to sit on the TV, on the couch and watch TV, but you can watch TV and do stuff on your computer at the same time. So you just kind of have to make those sacrifices now so that your business will succeed and you don't have to go to that job eight to five every day. Because that's the exact position I was in and I hated every second of it. So I was like, every minute that I'm not working, I'm working on my business so that I don't have to go to work anymore. And that's exactly what I did. So it was a lot of discipline and, you know, sacrificing a little bit of time here and there. You know, I watched an hour of Netflix instead of two hours or whatever the case may be. So um, that is kind of my schedule and things like that. Does anybody have like specific questions? I feel like I went through that super fast or any like schedules that you guys have and you want help like figuring out how to fit certain things into your schedule or anything like that because like I said I've been on both sides of this I used to work full-time and do this part-time and now I do this full-time so the only thing I don't have is kids so <laughs> if you guys have any questions you can put them in the chat that was super quick um but I'm happy to help anybody that needs a little more guidance or any suggestions for your specific schedule, because like I said, it is different for everybody. Anybody? No? <laughs> I don't know if, is it letting you guys unmute? You can either unmute or put it in the chat, whichever. Um, and I'm going to stop this recording.